Yeah. So Priyanka, I'm, I'm excited to have you on here because I, you. you know, I would say you probably really kind of came up on my radar about six months ago or so. And not that you've been killing it for much longer than that, but we had, we had these, these photographers, some of our MagBot ambassadors kept saying, Trevor, do you know Priyanka? You have to know Priyanka. This girl is amazing. <laughs> One in particular, who, who I just happened to mention her name, Tanya, she was telling me, and in fact, I had mentioned this to you. I had asked you about this a little bit. She had said, Priyanka is like this run and gun, crazy, awesome photographer. She just moves fast. She's popping up lights all over the place real quick. And, and I noticed the photos that you shared with me that we're going to talk about. I actually, I see that in the photos, like, like the photos and I'm, I'm kind of giving everyone a kind of a preface of what's to come. But I think a lot of times when I think of Magmod, I think of like portrait pose shots, but I feel like a lot of these photos that you're going to share and we're going to talk about are actually more kind of these like moments, these candid moments that sometimes are really hard to do with flash. So I'm excited to, you know, to share these photos with everybody and kind of learn about how you shot these and kind of your technique behind them. So, yeah. Excited. Thank you so much for having me. And actually, talking about Tanya, I met her online through the Magma community, as did I uh -huh. meet like so many other cool people like Jesse LaPlante. And, and oh, over awesome. the course of the last two years, I've met a bunch of them too. I just like email them, ask them to shoot with me, or they ask me to shoot with them. So it's been this community for me is has opened my eyes, opened my mind to like you know, impossible um possibilities so thank you so much for that that's awesome that's awesome i love hearing that and i you're absolutely right what a great way of being able to reach out to people and just say hey you know i i love that we have similar styles or maybe even totally different styles but i would love to have you shoot with me or help me out um that's awesome i i love hearing that so uh fantastic job priyanka tell me where uh where are you based out of or let everyone else know where are you based out of yeah, sure. Um, I'm based out of New York City. I shoot in the, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not use the word shoots. I'm going to try and every time I say shoot, somebody take a shot. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I photograph mostly New York City and um, New Jersey, Connecticut, mm -hmm. Philly. Um, so Northeast, but I also travel a fair bit. You know, Ohio is another, destination. Chicago is a hot spot yeah. for me and uh, Mexico and stuff like that. So. Gotcha. Right on. That's awesome. Now, New York is obviously the kind of ground zero of what's happening right now. Has it has it been difficult? I, I actually maybe this is a great segue because I one of the things I want to ask you about was you actually started kind of a social distancing group for photographers, yeah. right? Yes. Tell everyone what's what's the name of that group again? Yes, it's called the FOFC, which is Friends of Fearless um, Conference. It's a conference okay. that's run by some of fearless photographers. Uh -huh. um, so FOFC, it's abbreviated and um, social distancing club. So FOFC social distancing club, it's a, it's a Facebook group where um, I started it when we first started social distancing because I saw a lot of people not social distancing and yeah. I wanted to just post, post photos out there where we were all doing the same thing together and it's okay to stay at home and do this stuff. You know, I wanted to share um, all the nuances of parents struggling with homeschooling um tantrums um you know drinking wine in the end of the day to get over <laughs> the day um and you know also the nice parts where you're connecting with your family so now we have about 700 members it just blew up and there's members yeah. from all over the world and um we submit a daily photo into a daily album and we have two mentors who come in and um, like kind of critique it and help you shoot better photos for the following days. We have really good speakers coming in to CC the photos and talk about how to shoot moments. That's really cool. So literally every day you're asking people to share images there? Yeah, it's a lot, but uh, you don't have to do it every day if you don't want to. Sometimes it's just you're having a really crappy day and you don't want to. But yeah. we also like encouraging people to sh take self-portraits to show how they're feeling. I feel like as photographers, we are left out from the narrative. So yeah. it's really nice to do self portraits There's a picture of me where I have turned into a washing machine in my <laughs> self-portrait because they're just like, mom, 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 mom. And they're like, they want other, like, so they've either they wet their clothes or they want food or they want like milk or something. So I'm like a machine, like I'm a mom 2.0. <laughs> so I made a self portrait where I'm like a fixture on the wall. So it's a nice venting place and everyone's going through the same thing. Like this members yeah. from New Zealand, India, um, Netherlands, Brussels, um, Italy. The, the, the guy from Italy is like killing it. 
So yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So if, if you guys are watching again, you said FOFC social distancing. That's what you can search on Facebook. Maybe, yes. maybe Tanya or one of the members that might be tuning in watching us, maybe they can share it in oh, the wow. links as well. Oh, um, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. So for, if you're watching this in the MagMod community, I'm actually following the comments that are popping up on the MagMod page. So if you wouldn't mind jumping over there and then that way, if there's any comments or questions, um, it's just one place that I can kind of monitor everything from. Uh, uh, Priyanka, before we jump into this, I just want to just a couple of the comments that are coming in real quick, and then we'll get into uh, the first image. But I want to mention, uh, so Tanya says, so excited to see Priyanka. Raul. Uh, Angie Nelson says, hey. Uh, Bob, Bob Tommaso says, hey, from Rochester. Uh, Alexandru says, hey, from U U uh, UK. Um, it looks like Bob's actually selling Magmod products, which is awesome. Uh, Jen is from Ontario, Canada. Uh, we got Linda Berichis Colembrander. Oh my goodness, I totally butchered that one, but she's giving you some hearts and some high. Some <laughs> you know, I, I also can't say Linda, uh, Linda's last name, but she made me practice it the other days. Berichis, Berichis, Berichis. So now I just say it five times. Berichis, I like that. Berichis Colembrander. <laughs> Uh, we got Sarvesh. Hey, love your style. The I one was awesome, is what they're saying. Uh, Mark is hello from Los Angeles. Jose, <laughs> love you, Priyanka. So proud of you. That's Jose Rodriguez. We got uh, Scott and Brady and Wayne and Ramon and Andrea. Uh, Abby is watching uh, from New Jersey, uh, Connecticut. Oh, my goodness. There's uh, people just popping up all over the place. <laughs> uh, yeah, Abby's saying big fan of Priyanka's work from Philly. Uh, from Holland, Gabby's watching from Holland. So, uh, so you just got a worldwide audience here. We got hello from Botswana. Holy smokes. Wow. wow that's awesome. Yeah. So awesome. Well, thank you well, all for joining us. Thank you. It really means a lot. Yeah. Well, Priyanka, I'm excited. I mean, one, I'm excited because I got pink light behind me to match your amazing hair that you have going on. Um, but uh, but let's let's jump into some of these photos. Let's let's start talking about some of this and and share. Uh, I, your work is is so incredible that I can't wait for people to see it. So um, with that, do you mind if I just kind of hand the mic over to you and let you share your screen? Absolutely. All right. So, awesome. um, before I share, I want to say, um, along with, um, being a wedding photographer, I also do street photography and I do street mm -hmm. photography. It really helps me, um, take my mind off pose stuff and really focus on real moments. So that's one way I practice shooting real moments. And the other thing that I do is I am an educator in photography and I do mentoring. So everything that I teach and there's like amazing teachers here in the Magma community who do posing, how to use lights. And what I do is I teach people how to shoot moments, whether it be with Magmods or without, but how can we all focus on ourselves, connect with our emotions and photograph these emotions when we see it in other people's um, lives. So that's what I would say. I love that. Make my photography different and unique. So I, I love that. Thanks. Because you're right, Priyanka, that's exactly what your photos. That's what I see in a lot of your photos is these moments that you can't, you can't pose this stuff. It's like you're capturing things that are just, like you said, the, these moments that you have to be prepared, you have to be ready for it. And, and yeah, love that. Awesome. Thank you. So let's just dive into the photos. Um, all of these are moments. I have six photos, and this is the first one. I can make it full screen right here. Can you see that okay? Uh huh. Can. Okay, great. So, this is a wedding that I actually shot with Tanya. Um, and um, here we have a setup where there's like a, a structure um, around the bride, and the bride and groom are like a decorated structure, and the bride and groom are sitting inside of it. Um, and there, there's a part where the priest was saying a few words that made the bride really, really emotional. Uh, a minute before this, she was laughing and having a, a blast, but the next second she started cheering up. So when I'm shooting stuff like this, uh, I'm the stalker. And by that, I mean, I am glued to the bride and groom. Uh -huh. And um, when I'm, I'm committing to them, my job is to not miss a second that they're, they're you know, that's going to kind of unfurl in front of me. And at this time, Tanya is going around the whole, um, um, the wedding venue and shooting everything else. So there might be guest reactions, there might be the whole scene of the entire structure with them and the priest and the parents, whatever it be. But my commitment is 
literally only to them. So I'm here very close. Um, so, so, so Priyanka, yes. So Priyanka, then, so just to kind of summarize that. So what you're saying is one of the things that helps you capture these moments, you know, is by let telling your second shooter, hey, I need you to be roaming around capturing the the yes. wide scene, the audience, the reactions, that kind of stuff. I am going to be solely focused on the bride and groom for this time yes. period. Is that is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. And the other thing that goes along with that is this is like, you know, the larger conversation on how to prepare your clients for moments. But when I have a conversation with my clients and I'm showing them photos like these, I'm only showing them these moments. I'm not showing them the wider scene. I'm not showing them like um decor i'm not showing them the ring shot nothing i'm only showing them these moments so they are mm -hmm. only expecting these moments and anything wow. else is a happy surprise right it's extra that's so. awesome though you know it's interesting because you're you're showing them the hardest things to capture yeah and and i bet that that also that kind of sets up a challenge for you where it's like you're challenging yourself you're saying i'm going to show you the hardest things to capture and yet i'm going to make sure i do this for your wedding that's that's pretty that's awesome yeah, and, and and with Tanya, because she's an experienced photographer, um, and I don't want her to just be, you know, doing like the B-roll, um, we actually took turns. So sometimes she would come in um, mm -hmm. and I would go for a little walk. I call them a walk where I'm looking for moments to surprise the client with, like mm -hmm. children sleeping, yawning, throwing stuff at each other. So I'll do a little walk and then Tanya will step in and shoot, you know, close. So we, we do take turns, but... Um, during the important moments, I make sure that I'm there. I love that. Um, so for, in terms of lighting, um, let's see. Okay, first, let me show you how I shot that. So this is just that moment, right? This is like, uh -huh. what, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times four. What is that? Uh, 28? Yeah, is good. Right? you got it right. <laughs> 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 is that a so test? I, I mean, like this is just one um, screenshot of the entire moment. She looked at him and cried and I shot 28 photos of that. So I started by shooting vertical because I thought, let me include her beautiful jewelry. Let me include his um, turban. Let me include the hands. So vertical made sense. And then I asked myself, what is the important part of this photo? And it was her finger, the tears, and any uh, implication of him looking at her. So I settled on this photo, right? Because um, you could see the tears coming down. The hand rubbing her tears also emphasized that the tears were falling down because tears are small. Sometimes you need like two or three different yeah. clues to make sure what emotion is she feeling right here. And this is also a sweet moment, but I thought this was stronger. And just so I get the tears really strong in the photo, I actually decided to crop him so yeah. I could get really close in there. So sometimes it's okay not to show the whole picture. You get the idea, you know who the groom is because it's um, a visual story. There's like 10 photos of this, this ceremony or 20 or 50 or whatever. So you know who the guy is. But here yeah. the story is about her and how she's feeling towards what she's listening and the hands on top of each other. So yeah. with moments, I feel like sometimes we, we forget that we can emphasize a moment by using really good lighting. Um, and we, we sometimes settle for like on camera flash or bouncing light. But I think it's so cool to be able to use um, a directional source of light to make this moment even more dramatic. Imagine a flat tear falling down with light straight on the face, as opposed to a light coming from the side, yeah. um, where you can see one side of the tear has a shadow on it. That yeah. brings out the three dimension of the tear. And that's what I love about Magland. So um, here I have, um, let's see. Okay, so this is my key light, which is, um, attached to the uh, decor over here. And uh -huh. um, I have a second light over here on a stand. Okay. Right? With, looks like um, with the and that has a there. grid on it. So this one has a, a bounce. I'm not sorry. What's it called? A sphere. A sphere. Uh-huh. With a gel. And this one has a gel and a grid. 
and then I keep like turning off and on my flashes um, with my my transmitter and I also have um, an on camera flash with a, a sphere right here and it's on a, a very very um, low setting it just goes like uh, yeah. It's just to like fill in any tiny little shadows, even like shadows from hair and stuff. You can eliminate it and it's easier to edit when you have that small, tiny fill flash. So this is a video of me shooting this. <laughs> So I'm like literally in the middle of the action. Um, yeah. You can see the parents are not focusing on me. You can see the bride and groom are not focusing on me. The, the priest is not focused on me. And this all can only happen when you prepare the entire family to, um, to what is important with their photography, if it's moments. Um, really be present and be into each other so i can capture that and show those to you you know do you do you typically let them know kind of ahead of time what you plan on doing kind of how you or, or is it i mean like in other words will you tell them like hey guys i will be kind of up on the stage close to everybody capturing this. yes or do you Absolutely. Yeah. yeah yeah i also try and have an engagement shoot with them and sometimes i go really close just for the heck of it i don't even submit those photos because it's you know, it might not work out, how, but I want to like get them used to me being up in their face. Nice. So, engagement like should that. really help with this. Talking to the family as soon as you go there and saying like, thank you so much for having me. I know I, sometimes I'm going to be like really up in your face, but you know me now and please be comfortable to be yourselves. You know, that really helps. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Basically setting them up to know what's coming. So they don't, doesn't catch them by surprise. Yes. That's fantastic. That's really good advice. I, um, I also, I just want to emphasize what you said earlier, which was that tier, like you said, if it was flat lighting, you would not see the dimension. You would not see, you would see like a streak down the cheek, which you, you know, you might be able to make out because of the makeup was running or something like that. But yeah. the fact that you got that little bit of shadow on the tier makes it pop and it makes a difference in, and really making that photo stand out and making it special. So I yeah. totally agree with you. It's so important to, to have that little bit of direction of light coming from somewhere. So really good advice, Sur yeah. super good tips. And there's also, because these are moments, the lighting doesn't have to be perfect. There's a lot you can do, um, you know, like, like here, there's, there's a little bit of shadow and that doesn't bother me because it's a moment. If it was a portrait, I would make sure that I got rid of it. Yeah, great advice. Love that. We have, uh, so again, quite a few people watching. Uh, John is saying beautiful. We got Tanya. <laughs> you mentioned Tanya's name earlier. She said best experience ever shooting with Priyanka. She's an amazing photographer, teacher, and person. Um, and then VJ is saying, I miss weddings. I know I do too. Every, I think we all miss weddings. They're so much fun. But I, I saw a video the other day that was posted and it, and it was a group in Australia and they were saying how uh, James Day had posted actually incredible photographer out in Australia. It was a group of wedding planners and coordinators and florists and photographers they basically came together and created this video that said, hey, your wedding in the fall is going to be off the hook. It's going to be absolutely off the hook because we're all just have this built up energy and like, yes. you know, excitement. So it's going to be a rave. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. So Priyanka, you have the second photo up. Tell us about this one. Yes. So this is the same bride and groom, and this is the, the evening event, which is like a reception party, and they're cutting the cake. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm again, I'm like the moment junkie, so I'm, I'm going in really close. Um, I don't know if you can see the lens over here. I, I think this is like a 35. I'm like right up in okay. their face. And I'm like, when I see something like this, even if the second shooter is shooting, I I have no qualms coming in front of them, blocking them, pop, 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 and then I'm off, right? Like, yeah. but I am not going to like, it's like, I, I know this is something to be said about etiquette, but I get paid, I get booked for, to show moments like this, right? So it, whoever is there, it, it takes a second, boom, 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 and then you're out of there. Right. Yeah. So when I shoot with videographers and stuff, I'm a real pain in the butt. So I do tell them, set up another camera, shoot really tight. And now they're really used to it. Um, 
And the only thing I can do for them is I give them referrals to say thank you. And then I apologize. That's the, <laughs> that's the, that's the, the trade off. But yeah. I, you know, I think I think the biggest thing though is Priyanka is you're letting them know what your style is. You're letting them know I'm going to get in close. And then and I think the other important thing that you you know you just kind of glanced over, but I think it's important to even mention is that that you don't linger there. That you you get the shot and you get out and you move and you're not just sitting there lingering because especially videographers or people anyone watching that or filming that moment, you know if if you jump in for a second and get a couple shots and then move out, great. If you sit there and linger if and you're right over the top of them, yeah, then it's then it kind of annoys you bring everybody. Bring the whole team down. Yeah. Um, but during the cake cutting, if there's nothing going on and it's super formal, then I'm using an 85, stepping back a little bit and making it look very pretty, like something mm -hmm. that's out of a fairy tale. But when stuff like this is happening, this is what shows me who they are, right? This yeah. is what your kids will see in their album one day. And so like, um, I, the, the backstory here, I think is like, I've been shooting weddings for five years now. And after two years of the first year, I shot like 60 weddings. The second year, like a similar number. And I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm just shooting so many weddings. And they uh -huh. all look the same, pretty bride and groom, wearing the same dress, walking down the aisle. Their dad comes in, your husband comes in. And yippee, hooray, like flowers everywhere, cute kids. And I was just like, really like annoyed with myself, right? Like, what, uh -huh. am I, like, what value am I giving these clients? And then at, at one point when I had this, you know, conversation with myself, I realized that I have to embrace who these people are because only that is going to let their photos be unique. So the uniqueness about this is her face. Look at her face. It's, her eyes are closed. Her tongue is out. She's so comfortable with this dude, right? Like he's yeah. going to smack cake in her face and she's like, bring it on, right? <laughs> I want to show that feeling, that, that chemistry, that like excitement. Like there's like yeah. 600 people around her and she's lost in this moment with him. Like it's yeah. as if they're on their second date being silly together, right? So yeah. that's why I use a light behind them to just pop right into the photo. I want a lot of drama. Um, I have an assistant holding a light on her face um, and on his face. I think it's hitting him more than her. You can see his hand is lit up. Um, and so the his hand is casting a little bit of a shadow on her face, uh, the, the, the spoon thing and her body, but that doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. Here it's all about the moment. And then the light that I'm using is to make it feel like for you to feel that excitement like yeah oh my gosh she's going for it right yeah um if i had not used that backlight i think it wouldn't add that extra drama to the photo i um, agree i i do think that backlight does add a lot is it just unmodified is it just a flash bear do you remember i think it's it's on a tr I, you know actually i see the assistant I see the assistant behind. I see his. Oh no, no, that that's that's the groom. Okay. Okay, so I'm I'm guessing I'm not one hundred percent sure. But I think it's on a stand, uh -huh. and I think the assistant is holding the light from the front left hand side. Okay, so yeah, and then and then the light in the very back though, the one that's creating the flare. Do you, was that was that a flashback there, or was that like a DJ light? That, mm -hmm. um, no, that is my light. Oh, that's your light. Okay. That's my backlight on a stand. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I think it's just um, a sphere and um, a full CDO gel. Okay. And the, the assistant is holding a monopod with um, a grid and a full CDO gel. And the reason that I use full CDO gels for reception is a trick I learned from Jesse LaPlante. Um, I make everything orange and then I shift my white balance to Kelvin. And I do like, now my sweet spot is like 3,200, but on this one, it's 3,800. Yeah. And, and so for those who don't know why, what, what would be your purpose, Priyanka, for doing that? Yeah. So the purpose is when you have a, a, a venue with a lot of backlighting, like you see the um, blue and the purples in, in the wall, mm -hmm. to make that really pop and be saturated, you want to use Kelvin because your light is only hitting the couple and then yeah. you're toning the um the orange up and shifting the kelvin to 3200 and everything's going to become blue yeah. but that orange gel in the light uh, is not going to be so orange if you shift the, 
the white balance to Kelvin. It's going to make it like pinkish, yep. like almost slightly like neutralizing it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I love this little trick as well. And I use it a lot, not just like you said, during receptions, but also even at sunsets and stuff when I want to change things, but you're right, you know, use those full CTOs, put them on your flashes, uh, and then, or, or half CTO, but, but bring that Kelvin down so that now you're saturating the ambient and the colors. And what's funny is a lot of these couples, they pay so much for uplighting, you know, they'll, they'll add it onto their wedding. They'll pay $800, $1,200, and then I've seen photographers deliver photos and they don't even show that uplighting because yes. they've been, they're flashing their flashes way too powerful or whatever, and just totally killing it. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I feel like it adds so much instead of just a flat bare tan wall or whatever, it adds so much to photos to be able yeah. to see that. When you use so, the grid to, to shoot anything in front of uh, uplighting, um, you're really enhancing the uplighting. So yeah. next time, if you're in this situation and you want to make a cool portrait with this, um apply just whack a grid on your flash with a cto shift your white balance to like 3500 and do a really cool portrait frame them in the curtain and do a really cool portrait with the apply yeah so true so true thank you for sharing that that's with, awesome uh, with indian skin tones the white balance has to be a little bit lower so that's why jesse uses like 3500 i i go like 32 mm-hmm and then, and I think those orange CTO gels actually help that pop as well. I feel like, I feel like when you just use the flash with no gels on it, the skin tones just look, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's like, it just, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have that warmth. I always look at skin tones and, and it, it to me, it seems like it's more like a, like a, like a chocolate chip cookie or, you know what I mean? Kind of like a, kind of like that, that kind of that, that, uh, uh yeah, the tan, that, that yeah. cocoa, or I don't even know how to say it except for me. I'm like, like magenta but um like a nice but for the glow, like you've been to the salon <laughs> <and you're> like... <laughs> yeah well, well i get but what you're saying there is exactly right i mean a lot of people when they go to their wedding they want to look they want that tan that that glow yeah. and and that's what those orange ctos should do for you or i, sh I shouldn't say orange ctos but the ctos yeah. they call it temperature orange yeah. gels so and i awesome. also like i love the intensity of the magma gels the cto gels i used a different company before mm -hmm. and it was too orange it was like Interesting. It was like orange, orange. This is more yellow, orange. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. Thanks for sharing that. I appreciate that. Oh, um, I love black and white images. <laughs> I love black and white, especially for moments. I included this picture because I shot it in bright daylight and the sun, it's at like one o'clock sun, the worst kind of lighting that you can ever imagine. And I, um, it was really hot that day. It was a really hard wedding to shoot because people were like really melting at this point. But this bride, um, and I know her really well now. Um, we have a very strong connection. I feel like I know her personality. She's the kind of bride who is, she's the eldest of three daughters and she will not cry. She's always been, you know, trained to be strong for the family. She's, I call her like, the lion of the family, right? So you that. can see like her jaw, her eyes closed. You can see like the tightness in her. Her mom is, a, is a, about to cry, but not crying because her daughter is not crying, right? And so like when you talk about a range of emotions, it's not just happy and sad. Um, like I'm homeschooling my kids now and we're like looking at a book and we're like, how do you think this person feels? And they're like happy. They're like sad. And I'm like, well, there's so many other emotions in between. Let's talk about it some more. How do you feel if I hug your sister and not you? you feel mm -hmm. jealous, right? So how do you show jealousy in a photo? Like ask yourself this if you're really interested in showing emotion. What mm -hmm. is she feeling right now? She's not sad because she, she's happy to be married she's not happy because you can see that so like what is she is showing to me courage right she's yeah. showing courage because this is hard for her and she doesn't her two sisters or her little sisters are watching and she doesn't want to make them feel that this is something that they need to be afraid of right mm, i love that so for me as a photographer it's my duty to show that and by not letting the shadows like sh show up under her eyes and by actually showing this moment in a, in a very honest way is me doing the job right, right? So the assistant is holding the flash with uh, Mag Sphere, uh -huh. no gel. 
And uh, when I'm going to convert everything to black and white, I don't overthink it. I'm just shooting like Max here. Um, and um, 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 yeah, just a flash. It's on high sync, uh, sync speed. And she's standing right next to me and we're shooting this. And then the videographer is like behind me peeping in. So we're all like around them. Yeah. Um, and, so are you using high speed sync because you want to, because you said this is shot during the afternoon um, yes. are, and you're using high speed sync so you can darken everything down to make it look, or, yes. you know. So I want the background to go away because there's mm -hmm. a lot of other things going on. Yeah. And so I want to blow out her face a little bit. Yeah. And the sun also, like when you shoot in the sun, it, it you get shadows on the eyes. I call them panda eyes. I don't mm -hmm. want panda eyes for emotional photos like this. I wanted to tell me the truth, right? Yeah. So this is a picture of what the lighting was like before my assistant ran over with the flash. So you yeah. can see the highlight is on her hands, on her arms, on the back of the clothes. Everything that's white is where a really good way to see like where the highlights are is just by like reducing yeah. like all of yeah. this stuff is the highlights. But where do I need the highlight to be? It needs to be on her face, on her smile. I need to see these yeah. people's smiles. So I need to see the mom over here, like contemplating for a second, right? And this yeah. is not, this photo is not doing justice to um, what I'm trying to show. So I fix it by getting the assistant to pop the light on. You can actually see it in the mom's eyes. Yeah. Over here is a little white dot. That's the flash. And it's a tear over here. I can only see the tear because of the pop of the flash. Um, and that's how I fixed it. I love that. What a, what a, what a great tip. And, and I love the fact that you use the high speed sync as well, just to kind of darken things down, um, you know, and make it, it, it gives it a very uh, uh, documentary feel and look to it almost like a yeah. I don't know I, I I don't know if that's the right word but a, a journalistic but in a way that's like it's like a journalism slash art you know I love yeah, that like photojournalism yeah for sure mm -hmm. okay so. uh let's see one of, one of the questions real quick came up um yeah. Sarvesh is this one shot in monochrome or edited afterwards I imagine you probably you're probably shooting in raw is that yeah. right Absolutely. yeah so if you so I shooting shoot in raw, raw then, because I crop okay. a lot and I edit a lot, yeah. Okay, is there? Do you have your own preset for monochrome, or do you do you have a certain um, one? I like use to use? the Develop preset, and I love the two man uh, pack. It's called Mystical Portions, two man Mystical Portions. I highly recommend it for um, very high contrast images. If your style is similar to this, yeah. Awesome. But they awesome. have a ton of uh, presets, um, and I tweak all my presets. They're not as is, so I. I tweak it for my skin tones. Gotcha. Love it. Love it. Uh, Priyanka Tanya saying so smart how you use flash during broad daylight, which is so true because oftentimes we think just broad daylight, we don't worry about it, but you're right. If you want that direction of light to actually light up the person as opposed to coming yeah. over. I like your, your panda eyes. I always think of like uh, raccoon eyes is the way I always say it is you get those big shadows and stuff yeah. if you're not, not yeah, careful. And, it's, and there is a way to eliminate it in camera without flash is you overexpose. But if I had overexposed, then you would be able to see all of the stuff behind, which would mm. distract from the moment. Like all of yep. this stuff is yep. visible because I'm exposing for her face. But if I don't expose for her, if, the, if it's full of flash on her face, then I'm exposing for a lighter spots, darker spots. So then all of this stuff goes into the darkness. Yeah, I love that. Uh, Tanya says, so smart how you use flash during broad daylight. And Marissa says, beautiful and so good. And Mark, he's giving me, uh, he's giving me a pat on the back saying I use the right word as far as journalistic goes. So nice. <laughs> I think it is a good description. Speaking of journalistic, holy smokes. I love this shot, Priyanka. Tell us about it. Yeah, this is another fearless award that I got. And I, I, a lot of people ask me about this photo and how I shot it. Mm -hmm. Um, so this I think the main question here is like the angle, right? How did I get this angle? I literally, I just put my hand up and I shot blind, right? Gotcha. Uh -huh. um, so, and I'm sharing that because you do what it takes to capture the moment. If it means you can get your eye there, doesn't matter. You use a really high F-stop so everyone is in focus. 
-hmm. and you you sh shoot a bunch of photos like you don't put the camera down until this whole moment has ceased to exist when they're separated and they're like done hugging that's when you stop so my hand the entire time like almost a whole five minutes i was just shooting this moment with my hand up i have um an assistant who is holding um a monopod with a grid trying to point it at the bride's face right so like after a few shots i'm looking at it and i'm like more to her face or something mm -hmm. like that right mm -hmm. and then so they're adjusting it i'm looking at it again and then i'm shooting so I'm, I'm making like micro adjustments because i know in my head what i want yeah um and then you can see there's a few highlights i love this photo because it reminds me of the movie sin city where everything is like blue and you know like the shade and it's like kind yeah. of like comic book almost. yeah yeah um so i adjusted the skin tone to match that idea of like comic book it's it is a little bit orange in the photo and I reduced it a little bit. Um, and um, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so the, the their head, the hair is lit up with my on-camera flash. So I have always have a little mag sphere on my on-camera flash and it's not pointed directly at them, but slightly up. Yeah. Um, and then that gives me a little bit of room to edit things um, if they are in the dark. So I can like dodge them and stuff. Makes um, sense. Priyanka, on this shot here, I, I imagine you probably were using a 35 here as well. Is that right? Yeah. So for like my entire reception, I'm shooting on a 16 to 35. Hmm. And um, so this could even this, be wider. I would say 16 and I crop. Gotcha. And, and would you say, uh, you, you know, something I think that's it, as always important to point out, especially if, if you're kind of getting newer to weddings for those people who are out there watching, is when you're shooting with a wider angle lens, you can go like aperture, let's say, I don't know, 3.5 or 5.6 or something like that. And you're going to have a lot of stuff in focus. Yeah. As so opposed, another you know, great reason to ahead. use MagMod is that you can shoot at really crazy apertures. I sometimes shoot at f22. I'm not kidding. Like this, I, I can't know if you can tell what the, yeah, sorry. I would say like the minimum I'm shooting at like 5.6 or like 7.1. Um, because especially when you're not seeing what your focus is on, your focal like point is in the middle and you're shooting, I would say like it, it's, it's going to be at least 5.6. Yeah, like you can see like over yeah. here, it's pretty crisp. Yeah. Right, like this guy is at least a foot from him and he's crisp, his hair is really crisp. Yeah. You can, everything is like his, these hands are crisp too, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, your, um, your, your depth of focus is definitely open. And, and that's such an important tip too. Like you said, when you're raising your camera up and you're shooting over a crowd or whatever, make sure you have that aperture open or excuse me, closed down, oh. I should say. Yeah. So that you can, you know, get more stuff in focus. Is there a certain, do you like to use a, a particular focus setting on your camera? Do you like to use like a, like a, a dot focusing or, or do you just, or like a matrix or how do you? Yeah. When I have a lot preference? of ambient light, I, um, I use the dot meter uh -huh. thing and I move it, um, with my pad. Okay. And I know this is like, you think in your head that it takes a lot of time, but I've trained myself to only shoot this way. So like now it's like driving, right? You don't think about what mm -hmm. gears you're on. You just move it, right? It's moving. Yep. But in the evening, when your number one problem is light, then I want to put it in the center and leave it there and just do um, a really high aperture. So I'm, wow. I'm helping myself, like making my camera do its job so I can do my job, which is focusing on the moment. So. I love that. One of the things that I like to do, Priyanka, and I wouldn't be surprised if you do this as well, is uh, during the reception, especially if it's really dark, you know, oftentimes there's a little bit of light and you can, you can, your camera can focus, but sometimes you'll get to a receptions and it's just super dark. And what I like to do is I'll go find a candle or something, let's say eight feet away. Yeah. I'll, you know, put my aperture at, you know, F8 or 7.1 or 6.3, something along those lines. I'll grab my focus and then I'll just turn it to manual focus. So yeah. in other words, I, now it's not, my camera's not going. Bzz, 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 right. Bzz. It's, Kind of it's no second lag. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I do that too. I point at um, a person's shoe and uh -huh. I focus on it on the dance floor. And then I try and stay the same distance as my focus yep. from that shoe was. So like say yep. someone is 
three feet away from me and I focus on your shoe. Now, if I'm photographing something, I want to be three feet away from that, that scene. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I used to do that when I used to shoot on my uh, 5D Mark III, but with my 5D Mark IV, I don't need to do that stuff. The camera is so advanced that I can put it on autofocus and it does everything. Yeah, they, they have been, every year, it has been getting better and better as far as being able to focus at nighttime. You're absolutely right for that. So that and the lenses, depending on what lens you're using. So yeah, love it, Priyanka. These are amazing. You're getting all kinds of yeah. praises and amazing oh. shot. Amazing shot. Yeah, exactly. I hope, yeah. Uh, you guys are learning something. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think, you know, every time I do these, um, and I've been shooting weddings for many years, but yeah. every time I do these, there's always things that I learn. Or if it's something that maybe I've done in the past, it's a reminder. It's just that yeah. I, an opportunity to like go, oh, oh yeah, sure. I need to do that. Yeah. That's right. I totally forgot. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Um, so another photo, this is actually one of the first weddings I shot with the mag mod. So I included this because it's a very special wedding. Uh -huh. And there were also some uh, challenges that I had to face with this one. The over light, the overhead light was really, really orange. So I have a picture of how awful it was. And this is like after I adjusted <laughs> the white balance in post. So it's kind uh -huh. of like pinky orange, but it was really orange, right? So I would say the the real white balance was more like this. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry, guys. Your eyes are probably hurting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, and then you can see that the ceiling is blue because the overhead light is not hitting the ceiling. Whatever uh -huh. the overhead light is hitting is what is orange, right? So that would include the bride and groom. So the original photo was really orange. This is from a wedding that was a few years ago. So I don't have the raw, but um, so imagine it to be like really orange. And um, usually I would use a grid and an orange CTO gel or a half or quarter CTO gel if, if I don't want it to be so orange and then adjust my yeah. white balance. But here, a few things were very challenging. Um, a, the overhead lighting was orange. So that means no gel, no orange gel. Um, and then B, there was 10 bridesmaids in the front over here and 10 groomsmen on this side. So I literally like had only one spot that I could go into and where would I put my light stand, right? Like the stage, yeah. I'm not gonna go on the stage and put on the stage. It was all like, it was 600 people, 700 people in this room. It was really, really tight. So normally I have one light um, on the side and slightly in front of the bride cross lighting them. And then one more on the other side cross lighting the groom so it's going like psh, and you're, yeah, like you're a stage, lighting stage bride. lighting yeah um yeah. but over here i didn't have space for two so i used one light you, and you can tell it's kind of on the um left hand side and it's really mm -hmm. strong and then i used a grid um, um, a sphere with no gel and um i just blew everything really bright Right. And then now the light is bouncing on the curtains, on the walls, everything. And it's just spreading and making this really light, airy feel, which is not at all my style. But I think troubleshooting in this situation is going to be key as a wedding photographer. And if I commit to that style for this, the whole thing has to be in that style. Mm. Right. It, like pretty much you want it to match because when you make an album, you want everything to be similar. Yeah. So that's what I decided on for this. So I used um, my Max Sphere, and this is a really funny story because um, I'm not very good with using blue gels. Uh, I haven't got to that part yet. Everything I, I know so far is from the MagMod community. I need to uh -huh. watch more <laughs> blue gel tutorials, CTB. Is that right? Yep. yep. Yeah. So I have this sphere that I used for um, a smoke bomb shot, and the smoke bomb was blue. So while I use this to light my couple in the smoke bomb, it caught some blue dye. I don't know <laughs> if you can see it, but I washed it with bleach now. So it's it become a little bit lighter. But during this wedding, it was kind of blue and I just whacked this on and it, without me realizing it neutralized the light, right? But yeah. maybe Trevor, you can tell me <laughs> the right way to do this. 
<laughs> no, no, I, I think you're actually, it's, that's a really funny story because I've never actually seen a mag sphere that had got died by a smoke bomb, but it yeah. makes sense. I mean, if that smoke is basically penetrating, just like a, 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 a you know, if your neighbor's house catches on fire and the smoke comes over into your house, it's going to just penetrate everything. And, and it's very similar, I guess, in that sense is that you're literally your blue smoke bomb is penetrating that silicone or, or basically turning it yellow, blue, which just cracks me up. And it's funny that that you used it for this wedding. And, and you're right, though, it, it would serve that function in that if you put a like, let's say a half CTB or a quarter CTB, very, very little bit about a blue and put it on your flash, then what's going to happen is it's going to allow you to basically uh, kind of neutralize that that orange tones that are, you know, that are coming off the ambient light. So, yeah, it, 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 call it a happy accident, but it worked out really well. Yeah. But now, like, I know what to do. Right. I, mm -hmm. I know next time I'm in this situation, I need to use a CTB. So I the one thing I will tell people is uh, one of my favorite kits. Uh, well, I should say gels at the Magmod uh, website is they have standard gels, which comes with a uh, half CTV, but they also have a, an advanced gel set, which comes with full CTV and a half CTV. Um, I don't think a quarter CTV. I can't even remember. I should know that, but but uh, but either way, it gives you a little bit more variety as opposed to you know. And in a situation like this, I would guess that you're. The mag spheres slash smoke bomb colored blue was probably about a half half ctb yeah so. okay cool love it um okay um oh so yeah and, and the moment i picked this photo and i know the eyes are closed but when when you're a um, photojournalist i think it's important to pick the photo with a, a very like it's like picking a decisive moment right you have like 10 mm -hmm. photos they're all happy photos which one is it that you pick that communicates what you're trying to say? For me here, the open mouth and them facing each other and the priest's mouth that was open, um, each of them mimicking each other trumps the eyes closed. So yeah. I'm not afraid to make this a double page spread. And um, that's another topic that goes with educating your clients like making sure that they are on the same page as you and when you pick these images to go as the key images and you have to have that conversation and tell them what expectations they can expect and know that these moments trump everything else so true. there's also like tons of cute photos of them smiling looking at each other and all that stuff i i do all of that but for my portfolio and for the albums I I try to be true to how I feel about you know what yeah. my connection with this is. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. So that's the yucky light. Let's quickly skip that. <laughs> okay, this one. Okay, so I know like I I'm very lucky in that I have a, a lighting assistant who follows me, and I can get you know like light in every which direction that I want. I only started that last year. Um, the previous wedding, like the light was on a, a tripod. Uh -huh. And then this wedding I shot last year, but I was second shooting for G-Day a la Kaja, and he didn't give me an assistant. So I had to like, you know, fend for myself. So we brainstormed and we came up with the ideal lighting solution for reception when you're shooting by yourself. And I think this will help a lot of you. So I set up three lights, um, I only had three light stands because I was second shooting, but when I have a main shooting, I have like four, at least four light stands and, and my assistant. So here I have, um, this is the dance floor. If it's a, like a rectangular dance floor, let's just use my screen, right? So mm -hmm. rectangular dance floor, I have one and two lights facing the audience, okay. right? And then one light on the other side facing my couple. Okay. Right. So in whichever okay. direction they turn, I have some light on them. Right. And then I have an on-camera light that's really soft. That's going to like fill any like uh, shadow and I can fix it in post. So the one thing that I learned from G-Day with this is because you're second shooting and you have limited light, you have to pick what locations are optimal for your photos. And then you come it to that angle. Right. So yeah. GA had an assistant and he was going all around. Like when you're doing photojournalism, the common 
um, technique that we follow is we don't just shoot a moment from one angle, but we keep going around and around it and trying to find different angles, different stories, right? But when you're second shooting something like this, you have to commit to a certain direction where the light is working for you. Mm. And then hope that the photo gods will bless you with a moment in that direction, right? So here was a blessing. Here was a blessing because um, the light from the camera behind me is is hitting the little kids who are reacting yeah. to the um, groom and the mother dancing. And what I have is a CTO gel and a, a grid. So that's usually what I have for my stand, CTO gel, full CTO and grid. And then on my um, flash, my on camera flash, I have a sphere. Then you can see one of the lights in the background, it's also a CTO with grid. And that's why it's not like, you know, blasting all over. It's a little like um, controlled because yeah. there's a grid on it. Um, and then you can see that light is pr providing really beautiful backlight for the guests in the background, as well as the mom's like hair piece. Um, you can see some, you know, the shading of our clothes, all of that light is from that one backlight, right? Yeah. yeah. And then um, my on camera flash and the one behind me that's on this side is lighting up the groom a little bit. So I love that. Um, in this situation, I'm bouncing my focus between the groom and the kids, groom and the kids, groom and the kids. And I then you pick which one is your like moment that you are connected to, and it's the kids. So Priyanka, you, you had mentioned, and, and thank you for sharing that. You, there's some really good tips in there. And one thing that you mentioned is, you know, you pick your shot and then wait for the photo gods. I, I would say that one thing that is interesting is that uh, you're, you're seeing something, you're pre-visualizing something in your head. You're saying, okay, I'm, this is my shot and I can see something that's probably going to happen here. I'm going to be ready for it. And then you know, like you said, when those photo gods are throwing you that shot and you're ready for it, you can capture it. If you're not ready for it, if you're not able to pre-visualize that and know that, okay, this is my, hopefully my shot in the future, yeah. you're not going to be tossed that pitch. Or when it is tossed to you, you're going to miss it you're because you're not ready it. for it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so I think that's important is just that pre-visualization to see what you want to happen. And yeah. then when you see that you want it to happen, it's almost like, have you ever been in a, in a, in a classroom setting or something and you're looking at somebody and you know that the more you look at them, they're going to look back at you because it's like they almost feel like it's happening. I almost feel like that in photography. It's like if I keep looking at these kids, something's going to happen. Something's oh, yeah. going to happen that's going to give me a shot, you know? Yeah, that's when you like turn into Jedi and you can control your mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's so true, right? You're like, ah, it's going to give me a shot here. So funny. I love it. Yeah, I, I, I totally, I, I totally uh, follow what you're saying. Sometimes I put my camera down and I look at someone. And then sometimes, like the next second, something's happening, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So true. So this, I think, is the, the last image. Um, okay, and I quickly wanted to say, like, this photo would never have happened if I was not second shooting for someone, right? Because mm. this is not a typical lighting setup for me. But I feel like I grew so much after this reception shoot because it, it took me, like, the first few photos where, like, Right, it was really bad, and then we I showed GD, we fixed it together, and then I, I I knew where to go. So like, don't be afraid to put yourself in a situation where you might miss something or you might screw something up. Um, yeah. Always have your on camera flash, but also like um, have the um, courage to like turn it off and trust your off camera flashes to see what it will give you. If you're not sure, like turn everything off, turn on one off camera flash. Okay, I like that. Maybe we'll add some like backlighting. Let's put that light behind them. Second light, right? And now you have two and it's looking really cool. Look at your photo. What is missing? This part is a little bit in the shadow. Maybe you turn your off cam on camera light on and turn it so you feel that shadow. So now it's like perfect. And if you get one good photo of that, pat yourself on the back. It doesn't have to be like you're not like with photojournalism, I always say not you're not getting a thousand foot perfect photos. You're getting a few perfect photos, and I am using my time to give you that wow photo. I love that. So, great, great tips. Thank you for sharing that. I think that was awesome. It. Yeah, yeah, I think that is. Well, you know what? And it's it's perfect because we actually we're we're about about eh, 
a little bit about an hour in roughly. I know we started a, about 10, 15 minutes late and that's my fault for anyone wanting to blame somebody. I, for some reason, my computer would not show Lightroom and Zoom at the same time. So, um, but Priyanka, wow, uh, this has been so awesome and, and inspirational and we've learned a lot. Like I said, it's one of those things where not only am I learning, but I'm also just reminding myself of the, the things that, you know, help us create amazing photographs. And you really tackle the subject today that, like I said, is in the beginning is, is something so valuable for MagMod shooters, which yeah. is you can still use lighting to capture moments and capture these candid, you yeah. know, really fun and, and the, the moments that people look back on and go, wow, that that's why I hired this person to photograph yes. my wedding. It is our, it's our job as professional photographers to use all the tools in our toolkit to make the best photo for our clients. And I put, I put a lot of pressure on myself with regards to that. And um, I, I think that's what really has helped me set my business apart from you know, the other uh, photographers in the area who mm -hmm. are shooting with natural light and especially with candidates. Like uh, no. moms will come to me and say, I like this natural moment. And that, that didn't happen for a really long time. Parents are really drawn to portraits, you know? Yeah. yeah. But this is, it's changing. So, yeah. Yeah. No, oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank Priyanka, you. Uh, I know you mentioned the FOFC Social Distancing Club earlier, but yes. if you're joining us a little bit late, uh, which we've, yes. we've had a few people join us a little bit later, I just want to make, make sure we mention that again. There's a link. Tanya posted a link in the chat so you can go back and find that, guys. Uh, go check out Priyanka's group. I think you'll, you'll really enjoy the opportunity. And I love the idea of having a daily challenge of some kind. I, certainly, it, just like practicing a piano, the more you practice, the more you have that camera in your hands, the more you're going to see things, you're going to strengthen that muscle. Um, yeah. I, I can't remember who said the quote, but there's a quote, a famous photography quote says, uh, the most important uh, equipment in photography is the eight inches behind the camera. So the brain, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and that's that's where we get to practice it is by doing that daily yeah. practice. So go check out Priyanka's group. I can't end this without at least having you introduce these amazing people that are in this picture behind you. Tell us about oh. your family. <laughs> so actually I use Magma for all of these when I was social distancing <laughs> during this time. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, have heard of Photo Fantastico. It's run by Olivia Vale. Um, she's a really cool girl. She was my roommate during foundation. And um, she, you know, she has this, this competition where she gives you like five clues and you have to make really awesome photos using that five clues. And there's like about 50 to 100 photographers who participate and whoever like makes the best photos wins a prize. It's prize money. So if you need the money, the next one is coming up in a few weeks and I'm judging. So please enter. It's called Photo Fantastico. I'm going to drop a link there. Yeah. Um, and the, the theme for this was your favorite kind of party. So guess what mine is? It looks like a quiet party. <laughs> yeah. So it's a silent Zoom party. So it was supposed to be a joke, but I don't know. We're all like tied up and. Yeah, so, you know, even though you're in quarantine, there's no reason to not use your magmods and shoot. Like my kids, they built a huge tent one, one night and I took my magmods out. I posted in the magma group and I lit them up from like inside, outside. I used like five different lights and I really oh, was fine. practicing and enjoying <clears throat> um, shooting my family documentary with magmods. So, you know, I love watching videos, but also go and practice because you yes. can figure something out without trying it. It's absolutely right. You can, if you're trying to teach a kid how to ride a bike, you can have them watch all kinds of videos on YouTube, but until they get on that bike and actually pedal themselves, they're not going to yeah. figure it out. So absolutely. Priyanka, you're amazing. It's been a lot of fun chatting with you and I appreciate thank you so spending much. the time. Yeah. This afternoon. And, and like I said, I've learned so much. So yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate you changing your lights to match my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I had to make, I had to make sure that, that, you know, we have a theme going on here. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bianca, you're amazing. Thanks everyone for tuning cool. in. And uh, again, we do these every Thursday. Is that how I shot it with uh, with someone like Priyanka? Priyanka is going to be a hard act to follow next week. But um, <laughs> and then and then tomorrow, uh, if you're watching tomorrow, we have another episode of Editing Wars, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I've told the contestants again that if they come in some kind of costume, they get an extra bonus point. So we'll have to see what they bring this week. Last week, it was Tiger King. If you missed that, you'll have to go back and check it out. 
Uh, and this week, uh, I kind of got a tip as to what's coming and I can't wait to see it. So editing wars tomorrow. Priyanka, before we close this out, I just want to read a couple of these comments to you. Cindy says, thank you. Sanjay says, hello. Uh, Sanjay, uh, Anaki, uh, this was so amazing. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to give the credit to you. Priyanka says, thank you, Trevor, but I think she meant Priyanka. Um, and then we have, thank you, Priyanka and Trevor. It was a great session. Love from India. Uh, Chelsea says she is such a gifted photographer. Judy says, thank you. Great hair color. And uh, so, yeah. It's There's only, other this is only during like quarantine. So who knows? Only during, <laughs> this, is, this is my bad haircut I gave myself. So it's excellent. Well, <laughs> well, thanks everyone. Thank you again. Thank Priyanka, you. you rock. Appreciate you. Thank All you right, so bye much. guys. Bye-bye. Stay safe.